So and when we look at site selection, number one, we're looking at uh, a site that is very high with respect to the surrounding area. You know, we don't often lose blueberries to frost, but we lose them occasionally. And those that are up a little higher tend to be uh, better off. Uh, we want a good internal soil drainage. Uh, soil, uh, we'll talk about soil type. We're talking about raised beds for these. If you put blueberries in, make sure you put them in on raised beds. Soil depth, minimum of 20 inches. Root system doesn't go down that far. And then we want a pH of about 4.5 to 5. This isn't a blueberry field, but this is a frost. And this is a frost pocket down here. You can see in the morning, we've got the frost down here. You can see we don't have the frost up here. Not a whole lot of elevation change, but that could be the difference between a crop and no crop. So keeping those blueberries out of a frost pocket or a low area. Visualize your field with 20 feet of water on it. Where's that 20 feet of water sitting? That's not a good spot to put blueberries. And if you've got a drainage area through the field, not a good idea to plant blueberries in that drainage area because it's going to be extra wet. Uh, an ideal loam soil is about 45% soil, you know, solid material. About 25% micropores, little tiny air spaces. All soil has air spaces in it. And uh, it's very important for our blueberries to be able to get oxygen out of the soil. And if those air spaces are all full of water, they're not pulling oxygen out. And uh, therefore, you're going to see some nutrient deficiencies if they're flooded for a long time. And you'll also see Phytophthora root rot, which is what most people are uh, of the big problem that people have. And there's about 25% macropores. These are big holes like worm holes and so forth. And then typical soil has 5% organic matter. We like to bump it up on blueberries. Uh, I mentioned uh, soil drainage. Roots require oxygen. Uh, we talked about this. This is not a blueberry planting, but this is an apple orchard. And this is a low area. You can see the ruts in here. You can see the trees are surviving on both sides, but they are dying down here in the low area. Uh, 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 so how do you assess the soil drainage? Well, you can, one easy way is to bore a couple deep holes in the, take a fence post auger and dig some holes in your property in the winter, fill them up with water and see if it drains out, okay? Uh, this is our university farm right here, and this is a high spot, and we're looking down to the low area. Right down here in a low area right here where we have poor drainage is the Lindale silt loam right here. Right up on the hill here, up, up a little bit on the hill here, we've got this Donnerell silt loam. And then up top here and most of the farm is this Mari silt loam. Uh, if we look at this, this is, we had uh, two... 0.77 inches of rain, so almost three inches of rain in one day. And this is one day after the rain. You can see down here in the bottom, there's where the water table is. This, is uh, this was a soil judging thing, so they dug these pits six feet deep so they could look at the soil profile. So I just took advantage of that. Uh, you can see uh, one day after this, here's the uh, uh, Donnerell silt loam over here on the side. The water table has dropped some. Here's a Mari silt loam six feet down. There's no water in it. That's considered a well-drained soil. Uh, here we see two days afterwards. Of course, it's well-drained all the way down. It, the water table hasn't gone down very far down here. Here's seven days later. It's, it hasn't gone down very far in seven days. So that low area, not a great area for blueberries, um, particularly for uh, frost protection. Well-drained soils would generally have a brown color. Uh, you can see the nice brown color here. You can see the uh, uh, sort of darkish gray colors over here on these poorly drained soils. That's organic matter building up in the soils because you're not getting the oxygen down there. Uh, you'll have variations in modeling. You may have gray modeling areas in the soil. Uh, you can get some pale yellowish colors or pale or dark gray colors or rusty orange colors in, in poorly drained soils. Uh, if we look at any soil, it's composed of a whole bunch of particles, different soil particle sizes. Sand is the largest, clay is the smallest, and a lot of our soils in Kentucky tend to be silt loam soils, or partially in the, in the center here, a nice mixture of clay and, and sand. Uh, clay holds nutrients much longer, it takes longer to dry out. Sand does not hold nutrients very well and it dries out very rapidly. So uh, 
Soil depth affects the water holding capacity of the soil. And if we look at this table here, we see the available water for these different types of soil types. And here we have readily available water. This is about half of the available water. This is where we want to be dealing with irrigation. We don't want to let those plants get really, really dry because that sets them back, slows them down. Well, we don't want to all water them either. So we're looking for sort of a happy medium in there. Uh, but if we look at a, a loam soil, uh, you can see readily available water in the, let's see, in the, uh, at a two foot depth, okay, two foot rooting depth, uh, we've got about two, one and almost two inches of water available to that blueberry plant in the, in the first two feet that are relatively available. And that's one inch of water is 27,000 gallons. So soils can hold a lot of water, but they dry out fast like we found uh, later this this summer. Uh, if we look at a soil profile, you've got an A horizon up here. This is uh, where we typically have most of the topsoil. Then we've got the B horizon or the subsoil. C is a parent material and D is bedrock. So this is typical soil uh, profile. Uh, if you're trying to decide what your soil's like at your place, uh, we can do a web soil survey. This is a, a app that you can get, or it's, it's, this is on the computer. Uh, and uh, I first time I brought this up, I looked all the way around for a button to push over here, and you start it by pushing that button right there in the middle. So you push that, and it uh, takes, you, <coughs> takes you to the uh, map of the United States. You click on Kentucky, and then you can zero it down and put your address in there, and it'll pick your farm right up. So it, it gives you, pulls your farm right up there. Then you click on this AO, AOI rectangle and you map out your area. So this is the university farm that we just looked at that was the, you know, the, we just looked at the uh, water levels at, okay? So this is up on top of the hill. We've got an apple orchard up here and I've got some blueberries right in here. And this is the low area down here. So we uh, clicked on that and we bring it up and it maps the soil types out for you right there. So. So you can, you can do this right on your computer at home. This is available to anybody. We used to have these big soil map books that were getting really old and there weren't many left, but now all of this is on the computer. Takes you a little while to figure out how to work this, but here's that area mapped out in different uh, soil types. Okay, here's something that tells you the depth to the water table. So you can see, I can't read that anymore, but uh, uh, up here in the top, this was the, uh, uh, really poorly drained soil, 2.1 feet to the water table right here, okay? Uh, and then this uh, one over here on the side, 2.3 feet to the water table. And then up here for the other one, 6.6 .6 feet, greater than 6.6 .6 feet to the water table. So the water table's way down there. It shows you flooding frequency, you know, so you know when it's gonna flood. It shows you depth to any soil restrictive layers. You know, if you've got a fragipan in there, uh, it'll, it'll tell you that. These, a lot of these soils were mapped out many years ago by hand. They went out and did soil tests and, and, and punched holes down and, and uh, uh, they did this all over the United States. And they pretty well got most of the United States mapped right now. And they also have a whole lot of other characteristics. There's also a web soil survey smartphone app that you can get. It's a little clunkier than the other one, but uh, here we are. We uh, clicked on it. This comes up on the app. It's a free app, and uh, it uh, shows you the soil profile on this Mari Silt loam at the farm, and then it'll tell you the horizon description, the type and location, range of characteristics, geographic setting, and uh, drainage and permeability. Uh, use of the soil and what sort of vegetation grows on it and uh, the distribution in, in your area. So it, it's kind of nice. Okay, uh, I think a lot of you have seen this uh, uh, chart. Uh, this is the impact of pH or alkalinity or uh, basicity on soil fertility. And uh, it's at a pH of 6.5 to 6.8, here we are, 6.5 to 6.8. All of these elements are pretty well readily available. That's what we look for for most gardens and apple orchards and so forth, but blueberries are not adapted here. Blueberry roots can't pick up 
iron very easily. So they've got to be in a situation where iron is readily available. So we're looking to put blueberries in at 4.5 to 5 pH down here. You can see how available iron is down here. That's what we're looking for. When you start getting that pH up around 6, 6.5, uh, above, well, above five, uh, that blueberry plant has trouble picking up iron. It's just, it's there, but it's chemically bound up in the soil and the blueberry plant just can't get it out of there. Uh, soil compaction is another thing. Uh, uh, we don't worry about that too much on Maury Silt alone, but we're starting to worry about it. We've plowed that land so much, we've reduced the soil particle size, and we just got a subsoil soiler this year for our Maury Silt loam because uh, uh, some of our plots, plots aren't draining the way they should. So uh, we get compaction in, so in soils primarily because of tractor and equipment traffic. You keep running that tire over there, it packs it down. And when you run it over it when it's moist, it squashes the air out of that soil. That's what happens when you work your uh, uh, so too, soil too wet in the garden. It crushes those air spaces out and it leaves you mostly solid soil particles. So it's like kind of like concrete when you try to work it. And the freezing and thawing breaks that up, and so it works nice the next spring. But down below where you're not getting all that freezing and thawing, that compacted layer keeps building up, and it gets tougher and tougher, and so we want a subsoil in some cases to break that up. Uh, so this is just, you've got the handout here, but it shows you if it's, if you use one of these uh, uh, penetrometers, uh, if, the, uh, if it, you've got 300 PSIs, you're compacted. It's greater, if, great, if the 30, greater than 33% of samples are above 300 PSI, you probably ought to do something. Your soil's getting compacted. Those roots are having trouble going down through that pan. Uh, if 50% of the samples are 300, 300 P, greater than 300 PSI, you better do something. If the samples are less than 300 PSI, generally no benefit to the yield. So this can tell you whether you need to subsoil. And uh, we've got different types of hard pans. We've got fragipans. This is a natural uh, hard area in the soil. Usually it's a iron where iron accumulates. So you can blast those and break them up, but it will reform over time. So these are not real good soils to be on. Then we have the plow pan or traffic pans. These are the ones we subsoil and try to manually break that up. And I was talking to Ken this morning, and he said he was subsoiling a new area for his orchard just recently, just did it the other day. Uh, normally we wouldn't do it this late, but you want to do it when the soil's dry so it shatters. You don't want to do it when it's wet so it <clears throat> smears it. That doesn't break up that, that uh, pan. If you can get it down two to three feet, depending on how deep your, your pan is, that'll break it up. Uh, if you can go crosswise uh, and perpendicular, uh, yeah, and a lot of growers find it's just good to subsoil right down the planting row. That loosens that soil up so those roots can go right on down and uh, pick the water up. Uh, when not to subsoil, if you've got these big rocks that you're plowing up, not a good idea to subsoil. It just doesn't work well. Uh, improving soil drainage is really important for blueberries. Even though you see them growing in bogs, they're not growing down in the water. They're growing up on those hummocks above the water. So. Blueberries do very well in raised beds. And uh, we used to recommend rec planting them flat on a well-drained soil. And uh, you know, up in Michigan where they're on sandy soils, they're putting them on raised beds. That should tell you something. We've always had, we've had a lot of Phytophthora root problems. This is a cultural way to get those roots above, up above that saturated soil to reduce your problems with Phytophthora. So this, you gotta do this when you plant, though. You can't go in later on very easily and, and do this, although we have had one grower do it that I'm aware of. Uh, increasing the organic matter. You can see these are on a nice raised bed. That's what you're looking for. Uh, this is a shot out of our peach publication, Growing Peaches in Kentucky, and it shows you how you can take your tractor plow and plow up a raised bed. You may not need to make one quite this big for blueberries. We make big raised ones for peaches, but it uh, gives you an idea how to do that. Uh, you can improve soil drainage by putting it on raised beds. That's the cheapest way to do it. Okay, that's very effective. It's just as effective as putting uh, uh, tile drainage in, or you can put drainage tile in. And a lot of fields in western Kentucky have drainage tile in. I was 
in Oregon, in Medford, Oregon, in a pear orchard, and they had drainage tile. It was all made out of redwood with metal bands around it. It had been done, done many years ago, and every once in a while one of those would break and they'd have to dig it up and, and refix the tile. But, uh, uh, it's generally done about every 40 to 60 feet, depending on the amount of clay in your soil. So you don't have to put them down every row. Uh, you just need to drain that area. Uh, average distance is about 45 feet. Uh, but this is an expensive way to do it, but it's there for a long time. 